We made a great run, surrounded by a tragedy. I just, I know he's listening. I just love him so, so much. And I'm gonna miss you, Hank. He was just fun to be around, a very, very good person. You know, and aside from all the basketball, you know, I think that was the important thing about him, that he was just a fun person to be around. We all know that Hank had a son, Aaron. He loved Aaron uh, very much. When I was younger, I don't feel as if I was mentally prepared to deal with everything that came along with my father. We all know him better than I do, so mm -hmm. I don't, I don't right. want to hear it, you know? Right. And now it's like, you know, that's how mm -hmm. I can stay connected to him and get to you know, yeah, know him in a different it. way now. When you guys tell y'all stories and stuff like that, man, yeah. like, shh, embrace it's it, awesome. Huh? I'm just excited that he's willing and able now to embrace and learn more about his dad, and it's so much for us to share with him. It's kind of bittersweet. That's very important to me that no one forgets my father. Great basketball player, but even greater person, and I don't want anybody to forget that. Now, I'm originally from Philadelphia, uh, as Hank was, and we went to Dobbins Tech High School together and uh, was blessed to win a championship in 1985. Basketball was our life. That's what we did in both of our neighborhoods. Hank Gathers and Bo Kimball, a couple of guys from Philly, two guys who were the USC transfers, really kind of taking the, the Southern California area by storm with the style of play. Well, Hank and I were the captains. We brought the best out of each other on and off the court. I mean, we were pretty much Hank's team. Uh, you know, we just loved being around him. I think we just came out and we played very, very hard. You know, I just uh, got a little bit relaxed towards the end because we were up 40. I was having a lot of fun out there, and uh, hopefully we can come out tomorrow and, and play the same way. Loyola Marymount back then was wild. All throughout our three years, our team led the nation in scoring. They were very entertaining, just run up and down the court at will, fast breaking. Our junior year, Hank Adams led the nation in scoring and rebounding. Not a whole lot of defense, but it worked for them. Paul Westhead, the coach, and it was a phenomenal uh, success story. When Hank started to uh, have heart problems in the senior year, uh, he fainted one time in, Sa in the Santa Barbara game. The doctors did find a, uh, a heart irregularity. They put him on some medication. He missed about three weeks of play, and when he did come back, he was very sluggish. Uh, when he took the full dosage, it was, he wasn't able to be himself. And uh, with the stakes being so high, you know, we're in the late part of the season, he could have potentially uh, not taken all of the doses just so he can play well. The Albert Gerson Pavilion will be rocking with the Hank and Bo show, but what they want is to go out in style, and that's with a conference championship and an NCAA bid. We were handling uh, uh, Portland pretty well. I remember I was about five feet away from him. I remember him just going up for an alley-oop dunk. And then uh, Hank went down. We just were all in shock, like it's not really happening. Me and Tony uh, went to the hospital. We were watching them work on him. Me and Tony were sitting there and thinking like, oh, he's gonna be mad when he gets up. He's gonna be like, oh God, I can't believe I fell out again. Never in my mind was he's not getting up. I remember the doctor coming out of the room and like, yeah, he's gone, he's gone. It was like, what do you mean he's gone? I was about six years old. My grandmother, um, she woke me up. I heard people crying downstairs and she proceeded to tell me, Aaron, you know, your, your father, he passed away. Coach uh, called a team meeting, and the, this was a few days after his passing, and he posed a question, do you guys want to play? I was the captain, and I just said, we're playing. And that's what Hank w wanted us to do. For 22 hours of the day, they're, they're despondent, and they sit around in their rooms, and a lot of them are still crying and, and very uh, grief-stricken. For those two brief hours of practice, it's uh, an escape, it's, it's fun, it's uh, play. We really loved each other, and obviously when Hank died, we came together in an extraordinary way. It's been nearly two weeks since 23-year-old Hank Gathers collapsed and died on the court. A gut-wrenching two weeks for the Loyola team. Their fans turned out in force here at the Long Beach Arena for the team's opening tournament game. Game one of the NCAA tournament against New Mexico State, 
Loyola is there in body, maybe not in spirit right away. The whole team was very emotional because we were playing for a greater purpose, which is our love for Hank. Then the second half, Bo Kimball, one of the most touching gestures in college basketball history. I played 11 years with Hank, and I watched him endlessly work on his free throws. Coming into his senior year, he actually decided to switch shooting and, and shoot left-handed from the line, and, and it did work out well for him. And I was paying a tribute to that. I'm going to shoot left-handed to honor him. Everybody that saw it will never forget it. The moment I got fouled, there was nobody in the stands. It, the stands was empty. I'm totally in thinking about Hank. The NCAA tournament, you're going to all of a sudden start shooting free throws with your opposite hand. But guy work in mysterious ways, and all three of the shots uh, in th all three of the games, uh, they went in. For it to work that well was, was surreal. And I ended the game with 45 points, 18 rebounds, and got hot and blew the game wide open, and we were able to beat the first game against New Mexico State. My thought at the end of the game is we're going to win the, the whole thing. Second game, Loyola Marymount was inspired. They're playing Michigan, the defending national champions. What they did to the Wolverines was unbelievable. They scored 149 points in a regulation 40-minute college basketball game. Bo Kimball scores 37. Jeff Fryer uh, set a record of 11 uh, three-pointers. And that was really one of the best games I've been, ever been associated with. We were just on top of the world at that moment. During the tournament, our will was like ridiculous. It was like you just saw people on our own team doing things I had not seen them do the entire year. Alabama. Mm-hmm. I don't know how we pulled that one out. Sweet 16, they go on, they beat Alabama there. And this is, you know, this is the story of the NCAA tournament. But even great stories don't necessarily have a fairy tale ending. We ran into UNLV, which, you know, we were missing Hank in that game for sure. This is a great UNLV team. And they run up 130 points on them and, and beat them there. It just was a run that we did our best. And uh, for us, it was uh, nothing to be ashamed of. We, we put it all on the table. But if Hank was alive, uh, we, it, we would have took it to him. He would have been proud. He, he wasn't the type to like uh, accept failure. And you know, at that moment, maybe I felt like we failed. It took me a while to look back at like, no, it was like Loyola Marymount went to the final eight. It was an incredible run, one that, that people will never stop talking about. On the plane coming here, uh, you know, I just, the, the twist was I, I got, you know, had an emotional moment and shed a few tears, but it's because Aaron's here. When I first walked into the gym, uh, I was kind of overwhelmed with emotion. I'd never been here before. This is my first time here. Just to, to look up and see my father's picture and honestly, like, for to say Hank's house up in the corner, you know, like it, like it did something to me, you know? He got some great blood running through his veins. Being here at Loyola, having Aaron here, this is what it's all about. We got so much catching up to do. His dad, one time he told me, I don't care if you miss every shot, don't worry about it, I'll get the rebound. Because he would come post up right here and I'd be over here. Oh. They meant a lot because I knew my dad was around them. Those are my dad's best friends. I was speaking to Bo and I'm like, I need those stories. He still lives in those memories. It's helping me to get to know my father in a way that I didn't know him ever. No, I do know my, my father used to do that a, a lot, you know, like with, just with broadcasting and yep. stuff like that. Yeah, Man, he, he, was, he was good. He wanted Hank, to be a sports broadcaster. Yeah. Yeah. Hank had uh, his own TV show. Uh, he had his own halftime show with Clear Channel. He did, uh, he did some unique stuff, um, and he was great at it. When I think of Hank Gathers, it's happiness, um, it's memories of games and laughter. Come on, Chris. Bucket. <sighs> Ah! Damn! <laughs> That's it, I'm tired of wearing it. <laughs> <laughs> well, your picture up on the wall, man. You, you should have to win. <laughs> he was an amazing athlete, but he was even a better, amazing person. It's a very emotional time for me right now. I'm getting older, I'm 30 years old. It's getting to me a little bit. Coming across people who I've never met and seeing the love that they had you know, for my father. One of the things that Aaron said, he felt that Hank's spirit was alive. He felt that his dad was never gone. I can tell you that anyone that knows Hank 
spirit is alive and well with every single one of us.